Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke doing my hardware review meet, uh, meeting and video recording. Just wanted to reach out to you and say, hey guys, hope you're having a great week. Um, I talk about things and this one is going to be kind of a corrective statement uh, in regards to something. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan, by the way, huge fan of doing considerization, consolidation, miniaturization, and so on and so on. I can't see it. I don't see it anywhere, but it's here around here somewhere. And I did one of my introductionary meetings uh, about um, how to use tiny little SSD drives in a functional ways with a SATA and so on. And I could do 15 drives in a very small little space, and they'd go out into a uh, stylistic interface. And uh, but I got maximum functionality from the SATA bus that I could possibly get because the controller was the bottleneck, not the SSD drives, because they had such high I/O each of them. And the overall IOPS were very extremely high. Now, something I'm seeing nowadays is something that is kind of odd. And it would be me to say, don't do this. But at the same point in time, do it. It's fun. I get it. It's cool. And what that is, is what they call these little tiny mini NASs, right? They got a Raspberry Pi here. We got the bus interfaces. And then you've got, here, I'll take these off. And then you've got blah, lots of SSD drives, right? And you're making a tiny NAS. And if you got a USB style base interface, and or you've got a 2.5 gigabit bandwidth allocation, then a gigabit of capacity of, let's say, 1.7 to 1.8, um, you know, that's what you're going to get. And you're going to have what appears to be either an NVMe consolidated mini NAS or an NVMe kind of thought process internal, which is where they'll put like four or five NVMEs here inside the actual housing, the smaller versions, um, and or they can simply say, hey, we're going to use SSD drives. You know, we've got them right here, and we're just going to bust them out. And But unfortunately, here's the bad news. Um, Raspberry Pis and Aerials and so on don't have PCIe busing, okay? They have a serial bridging process, which is normal, and it has kind of like the equivalency of SCSI, serial, uh, ser serial computing input based communication. Um, and they have, a, they have a marginal amount of speed, you know, which is to be, okay, cool, this is really nice, uh, on a platform that was specifically designed initially to work with an SD card. So, with that being said, you have to have the pipes on the logic board to get the kind of functionality you need from PCIe. So I'm all about making, you know, mini, mini NASs because it's just fun to do. And it's a cool idea. As a matter of fact, I have one that's even smaller than this. And it is brutally functional. And it is about so big. I did a video on building it. And it's a micro bastion platform. But I use, the, you know, USB 3.1 because that's actually a better bandwidth than trying to create a NAS effect. Uh, with a small little mini device. So with that being the case, I used an NVMe 2 gig or 4 gig stick and I put it into there and I was able to have a pretty nice high performance, uh, very fast transfer rate um, because I knew the truth about my speed. Uh, a single NVMe on a USB controller 3.1 is nowhere near as fast as that NVMe you know, drive can really do. The I.O. is hundreds of times more faster uh, but you know 3.1 is pretty fast you know it's pretty neat I get pretty fast transfer rates when I want to back up an entire system that's why I've chosen it opposed to using a running hard drive now with that being said the key detail about having a running hard drive is that it does have some advantages you know this is it right here it's a Western Digital it's big. I've got 12 gigs here. All right, that's uh, t you know. T I'm sorry, 12 terabyte. Sorry, in that very expensive little drive, and it's for major, major, major stuff. And we start transfers, and uh, a week later, I can come back and pull the device. Uh, with the NVMe 3.1, I don't have that headache. I mean, there's just no spinning rotation. It's just so much better. But still, understand why didn't I put two in there? Why didn't I put four in there? Why didn't I scale up a you know RAID five with a backup and a 
put that on the front end of the of the bridge and then have a USB 3.1 output? Well, because it's just wasteful. Truth be said, you're not getting anything from the NVMe that makes it worthwhile to have it do what you want it to do. It's a clock divider factor too. So when you put more of these in, the slower the overall gets and it's not very pretty. Yeah, technically you would have a bigger pipe, right? You'd have a bigger, you know, bucket of storage capacity, but your transfer rates would go down, 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 down. I've made this statement before. It's called the curve, you know, results versus curve down effect, which is where you have success, 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 then it plateaus, and then it goes downhill. And that's the problem with the NVMe with PCIe in general is because it's so fast that it really can absorb a PCIe bus pretty hard. And so that's why you see the difficulty of configurations that exist out there uh, as they build them out and they're putting them on this very high pipe. This is a much bigger pipe than a Raspberry Pi. You've got to remember that. And yes, this guy also suffers the rule of thumb. And that is, you know, having four one terabyte drives in here as a clock divider by two, which is terrible considering how fast they're supposed to be, right? So when you have the onboard environments brought to you and you start to use them, and this, this card, this particular PCIe card, RAID 5s these guys together, and um, which is nice, but again, um, has the exact same problem you have with the PCIe bus because one bus, one slot, uh, usually you can get two channels on a motherboard um, effectively. It has a clock effect when you have more than one NVMe device on board. That's why a lot of times you'll see people will sell an, e an NVMe card that strictly only carries one on board. And not only will it carry just one on board, but it will alternate to the SATA bus as its backup, which is not a great option because PCIe is much faster than SATA. And, um, well, of course, SATA is, is going to be faster than Raspberry Pi, and so on and so on. So, as much as I love to build miniature versions of storage drives, right, because so, they're tiny, here's my suggestion. Go for it. Build all those crazy little gadgets with all those cool neats. I'm always a big fan of that, and I, and I support all of you for, in doing it. But here's something you should consider doing even more. The next logical step. These drives as you can see them here, are basic SSD drives. But they're actually even less than you think. You see, I did a video on this before, but you could pop these guys out of these 2.5 inch drive case housings because they're tiny. They're tiny. So if you're going to build yourself a really cool Raspberry Pi configuration, pop these guys out of their case housings they're so small that when you put them into the SATA connection, it doesn't have any distress on it. Does that make sense? Let me give you an example of what I mean. Okay. So here we have a good old fashioned uh, SP group. It is a ALC 240, 500 gig, uh, five, uh, 500, uh, yeah, 500 gig drive. Uh, very, very cost effective, cheap. And you know what? Um, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so look at that. Okay, so that's pretty small compared to this. So, you can put this guy on a SATA bus interface and it would allow you to basically, I don't have one here, it would just plug right in, it snap right into place and it's done. That's it. And I did a video on my 5500 chassis that was my huge, god-awful uh, Isilon platform. It was actually a super mi Midwest Micro white box. And it had these internal SATA output interfaces. And you could put multiples of these in there. And they would allow you to you know, have a any type of you know drive would right onto it and it would be good. But I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm gutting these bad boys. I'm going to pair them up and set them into these smaller chassis because these, these are perfect 
So I, I gut the SSD drive housings and I take the actual drive out. You see it? There it is. Right there. And you know, this is two five hundred yeah, you know, two fifty six blocks. And you know, you have to be careful. You know, that's why I have a static discharge here, so I don't run the risk of damaging the electronics. But look at that edge connector. That sucker will go right on any interface configuration. As a matter of fact, you can actually go into one of these bays, insert these with a little bit of a band strip. I put a band strip on there just to make sure that nothing could ever pop it out. But they're so snug and they fit so well. This is perfect. Now that's miniaturization. Imagine. Here you go. Look at that. That's even smaller than most of the devices you see out there. And if you put small heat sinks on these, just small ones, uh, similar to the Raspberry Pi heat sink, you'd be able to turn around and be able to provide um, heat dissipation even more effectively because that's actually what they expect you to do. They expect you to use these and there's no ventilation. If you look at it, there's no ventilation. When these chips start to heat up, they slowly degrade. But if you have them out in the clear, uh, they actually have a little bit more longevity because they have heat sinks on them and there's airflow. They're just not getting as hot as they used to, which is really cool. So like I said, I'm a big, big, big fan of taking the old things and putting new things in them and make them better. Uh, kind of like what I did with my little trick with the with the uh, platform NIS head. Let me show you. Here's an example. This is a uh, NetApp caddy, drive caddy. It's got a con control logic interface. It's got this SATA bitch interface control. So I, uh, you know, I have 24 drives. And what I'm about to do is going to blow your mind. See? Do you understand this logic? What you can do with miniaturization? Better yet, watch this. Here we have another one. Let's say you, you say screw a SATA you know, SSD drives. I don't want that. Sure, no problem. Nothing wrong with that. Look at this. NVMe. Look, nothing weakens it. It's not heavy. It's very light. And you can put your NVMe in there with a, th with a thin line aluminum heat sink. Or you can do these guys, same way, with a small thin line heat sink. And they'll stay cool. And they'll do great. So miniaturization, run with it. I think it's cool. Just don't use these. Don't use these 2.5 inch caddies. And understand that if you put a bunch of NVMEs or SSD uh, style drives that use the SATA bus interface connection process, don't expect the same kind of performance you would expect from one or two NVMe car, uh, drives sitting on a PCIe bus. Uh, it's just not comparable. I mean, there's just staggering differences. But I thought this would be really cool, and this is in support of a lot of my counterparts out there, who are playing with these platforms, they're learning and they're, they're thinking outside the box. And I'm a big, big, big proponent about thinking outside the box because that's what makes all this stuff awesome and fun. So with that, I have two questions for you. Well, actually what I'll do is I'll set up a video for this, a video of what would you like to see next and what interests you uh, in going forward. Um, Please understand, though, when we do it that way, it is um, it can't be a harder concentric. In other words, uh, show me how to do load balancing with you know five 2.5 uh, gigabit NIC cards that are ASUS based or Intel based or something like that, because those require very specific processes. My my recommendation every time is to read the manual that's provided by the vendor because they're the only ones that know the OEM back background on those platforms. But I'll do that video here in just a second. It'll be a little five, 10 minute video about uh, asking about things you might be interested in. And this is uh, me saying, hey, you guys have a great week. Uh, God bless. And I'll uh, put something up later uh, into next week. Take care. Bye-bye.